ask to say also that I plan to take uh, Anders Wigman from uh, MET with me, but he was lost at the airport yesterday. What's your thought on climate investment community when you came across it the first time? Um, I was extremely interested in the idea. Uh, I think that it's exactly the kind of thinking that we need because we are clearly not going to get a big global agreement through the UN process. At the same time, I do think that countries need to work out ways of cooperating to help reinforce domestic efforts, reinforce what they'd like to do, but maybe they're constrained by the need to be part of a larger group. Um, and I think climate investment is at the heart of it. So it is what conditions can help us, help industry, help others make the right kind of investments for a low carbon future. Um, and I think therefore that the, the concept is absolutely the right way to be thinking. Um, I think the real complications come in the fact that a great deal hinges on what exactly is it that this group of countries would try and do, how do they do it, how do you make it economically and politically sustainable? Uh, and there, I think we need to work our way through what kinds of technology cooperation are appropriate, what kind of carbon pricing structures can we develop that would support low carbon investment, but also deal with the problem of carbon leakage of industries, uh, potentially trying to move abroad without saving carbon, which is obviously going to severely undermine the economic and political credibility. Mm. So there has to be a solution around that issue, which is, is, is one of the comments that I think one would need a closer look at. Mm. You, you mentioned that the, the devils are in the details. The principle is good, the, de the devils are in the details. Uh, are there too many deals? Is this a, 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 a too big of an obstacle, or is it possible to, to come up with communities like this? I think it is possible to come up with communities like this, but I think what it faces is it's something I've, I've always observed about the climate change issue, which is what makes it really difficult to handle is that it is simultaneously both very political and very technical. Mm. And, and I think one of the problems we've had is that somehow people have assumed that it's, it's an environment issue, it's a feel-good issue, it should be simple, we just need to reduce emissions. And it's not. It is an enormously complicated economic challenge to structure how you get the right sort of incentives in, in place. Um, and I think we've been very naive in, in expecting that it should somehow be simple. It's not. And it's not simple politically, but it's not simple technically either. And so generally politicians don't like a lot of technical detail and, and vice versa. The problem is we really need both. Mm. And we need people who are, who are willing to, if you like, do the hard graft of thinking through the politics and the technical details. You also mentioned before that there is the gap between the economic politics and, and environmental politics. Mm. And, and, mm. and you, you talked about the, there needs to be a clear linkage between those. Can you? Yes. Uh, one of the things I find very strange about the current situation in Europe is that we have this tremendous fiscal crisis, which is you know, threatening the Eurozone itself. Um, and the discussion on what to do about that seems completely disconnected from the fact that we also have the European trading scheme, which is going to raise very significant revenues. But actually, the revenues coming from it could be much bigger if we had a tougher European trading scheme with more sectors auctioning allowances rather than receiving free allocation. I think that, because though some of those sectors are traded, you would have to address the border-related issues. But I mean, there is a package there which could easily link environmental and climate policy in a very constructive way with the dominant problem that Europe is facing fiscally at the moment. And I, I'm surprised I don't see many people making that linkage. Mm. So a a uh, climate policy is also good policy for the economics and, and the prosperity of Europe. It absolutely can be, providing you structure it in the right way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the three, three key words almost I would say on, the, on the, the, the positive side of this is that the right kind of structured climate investment community should deliver greater certainty for investment, mm -hmm. and deliver greater revenues from the carbon price instruments, and it would give greater energy security or energy stability. You would be looking at an energy system that involved more capital investment but was much less exposed to international fuel price variations, interruptions and so forth. Mm. Those are three big benefits. Mm. You then have to think how you deal with the downsides, which is where we talked about some of the carbon leakage mm. issues, etc.